Good morning. So right here, I have the results of a survey that was just done asking Palestinians about what do they feel about Hamas right now? And more importantly, do they think that the decision to go for the October 7th massacres was correct? Now, the results of the survey is going to blow your mind because we all hear this narrative about how these people are being held hostage by Hamas. But this is absolutely insane. And then I'm going to give you some updates about what's going on right now on the ground on the geopolitical kind of aspect of things. So look, I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm just going to cut to the chase. So 71% of Palestinians asked. So the survey was done on March 10th, which is give or take a week and a half ago. So a week and a, gap, sorry, a, week and a half ago, they've asked Palestinians, do they think that the decision to go for the October 7th massacres was correct, given what happened after? 71% replied that yes, the decision was correct. Now, most uh, respondents basically explained this by saying that the decision was correct because it raised awareness to the Palestinian issue. Now, I find it very interesting because at the end of the day, what we have here right now are people who are saying, look, we just committed this horrible, uh, atrocious act of violence we murdered 1,400 civilians in a single day, uh, but we think this was the correct decision because now uh, they're paying attention to our problems. Now, to me, it sounds a lot like this uh, old age dilemma, right? If you have two kids and uh, you give both of them an allowance of, let's say, $100 a week, and then one kid saves it, the other kid spends it on nonsense, on candy, right? And after two days, he comes to you and says, look, I'm all out of money. I need more money. Now. Do you give this kid more money because you are a good parent or do you say, no, you just wasted your money? The idea here is you would say, look, if I give you more money right now, what kind of message am I sending to the kid who saved the hundred dollars, right? Am I sending him a message that it's pointless to be smart with your money? Am I sending him a message that basically says, hey, just waste it all and I'll, I'll give you more when you need some? Now, to me, it sounds a lot like what's going on right now in the international community is that people are essentially trying to reward the Palestinians, whatever you think about Israel, whatever you think about the Palestinian problem, whatever you think about who's right, who's wrong, the Middle East, 75 history of, you know, Palestine, Israel, whatever you think, whatever your position is, are we really in a situation where we're going to reward the people who caused the October 7th massacres by giving them what they wanted to begin with? It's for you to decide. I'm not going to answer that question. Now, the crazy part about this uh, survey is that 70% 70 70 of respondents also said that Hamas is doing a good job. So right now, on March 10th, 70% of people, of Palestinians, they said that Hamas is doing a good job. So essentially, 7 out of 10 people in Gaza support what Hamas did on October 10th. Sorry, on October 7th. And the same 70% thinks that Hamas is doing a good job. So the vast majority of Gazans are fully supportive of Hamas' former and current actions. Now, here's the interesting part. Uh, in a approval rating uh, question, they've asked Palestinians, uh, what is your approval of Abbas, the Palestinian prime minister, the PLO, uh, you know, the head of the PLO, who basically controls the West Bank? 14% said that they support him. So 86% said they do not support Abbas. 86% do not support the guy who's been negotiating with the Israelis and doing a diplomatic kind of approach to this whole uh, conflict. 61% said that they support Sinwar. So 61% <laughs> support the guy who caused this war and who caused deaths of, by their own report, 30,000 people. And 14% only support the guy who is in for diplomacy. Again, just goes to show you uh, what kind of mindset uh, the Israelis are dealing with. Now, the interesting part about the survey is that 93% of respondents said that no murders happened and the whole October 7th massacre is Israeli propaganda. Hey, it is what it is. Now, uh, let's move on to uh, geopolitics. So right now, the Jordanians are essentially pleading to the Israelis, please do not go into Rafah. The reason that they're pleading is not because they love the Palestinians so much, it's because they're fearful for two reasons. Reason number one being that they're insanely unstable, 
So the regime in Jordan, which is a, essentially a king, the monarchy is basically a, a very unstable because the vast majority of Jordanians are Palestinians. The monarchy isn't. It's a Hashemite monarchy. So they're sitting on a powder keg of lots of angry people, lots of angry Palestinians, and they fear that if Israel goes to Rafa in the middle of Ramadan, they might overthrow the king. That's how angry they are over in Jordan. The other thing is that they do not want uh, the Palestinian refugees from Gaza if the IDF goes into Gaza to basically move to Jordan. So they don't want the Palestinians to go to their country, obviously. Same as the Egyptians. Nobody wants the Palestinian refugees. Amazing how they all support them from afar, and yet nobody's willing to accept them. Um, there's no real danger of the Jordanians pulling the plug on the peace deal with the Israelis, because the Israelis are essentially propping up that regime. Um, if the Israelis cut off the water to Jordan, they're in deep trouble. Let's put it this way. So there's not going to be any peace deal uh, negotiations or none of this. It's staying put. In fact, most of Palestinians, West Bank and Gaza, thinks that the Jordanians are traitors and that the Jordanian king is essentially a, their enemy because, he's, in their eyes, he's an Israeli collaborator, even though he's been very vocal and critical of Israel so far. Um, now, the Hamas and the PLO are having massive shootouts right now on the West Bank, and that's because uh, Abbas essentially uh, took the demand of the U.S. to appoint a new government and he made a whole mockery out of it in, in the eyes of Hamas. Essentially, the, the American demand was, we need you to make a whole new government. You're going to become an honorary president, but there has to be a new professional government so we can install it in, in, in Gaza. And you need to appoint somebody who's a professional manager to manage that government. Uh, what Abbas did, he appointed his CFO. <laughs> he appointed the guy who is the most, uh, they say that Abbas is the most corrupt. So that's the guy who was basically allegedly carrying out for Abbas all these uh, uh, corruptness. So he appoints his own CFO to be the new prime minister, which is clearly a puppet. Uh, Hamas is having none of it. So they're basically is lashing out against the PLO. And the PLO just yesterday or two days ago put out an official notice saying that Hamas is to blame for what's going on right now in Gaza. So because Hamas is now beefing with the PLO, the PLO is saying, no, 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 it's not the Israelis fault. It's your fault. You caused the war. You started October 7th. You're idiots. So the entire effort of Russia and Qatar to basically bring the PLO and Hamas together so they can essentially take over Gaza, it's falling apart because Hamas can't stand the PLO more than they can't stand the Israelis. As crazy as it sounds. Um, so negotiations in Qatar about the release of hostages are completely stalled. Uh, I told you this weeks ago, Hamas is going to pull this uh, game. They're going to make it look like the Israelis failed the negotiations. They're just uh, trying to stall as much as possible so that the international community is going to cause the Israelis to stop the war. Uh, that's their hope, or at least uh, get some uh, Palestinians riled up during Ramadan. Um, the Israelis had a very successful operation in Shifa Hospital, killing over 100 terrorists, capturing over 400. So they're still in control in North Gaza. The next step, obviously, is Rafa crossing, and we'll see what happens there. Um, U.S. port is essentially being built right now uh, for Gaza aid. It's supposed to be a temporary port, but there's talk that Qatar is going to build an actual port. Uh, the U.S. is making a mistake here, in my opinion, is bringing Qatar directly into Gaza. Uh, it's a huge mistake because the Qataris are double agents. Uh, even though they have the largest U.S. base in Qatar, in the Middle East, uh, be careful with letting Qatar get a full hole in Gaza. Obviously, the Israelis don't like it. I don't know if they can stop it or not. Um, the Israelis have been trying to set up a local government structure inside Gaza with the five cantons and five uh, ruling families, which I talked to you about back in November. Hamas is angry about it. They're pissed off. So there's a huge war between Hamas and these armed groups. And the Israelis are really pushing that right now. We'll see what happens. So that's that in my end. Hope everything's cool with you. I'll see you in the next one.